firstly, we need to understand that the Muslim perspective of evolution is very different than the Christian perspective. And one of the biggest misunderstandings that happen when Muslims say we don't believe in evolution is that agnostics, atheists, Christians assume that our perspective is exactly the same as theirs. Now, I'm not uh, generalizing, but there are predominantly those Christians who deny evolution, deny that uh, there was such thing as dinosaurs. They, did, they say that we were here for only 6,000 years. Uh, they believe in a very different version of events than modern science actually proved. Modern science can prove that there were dinosaurs. Modern science can prove that humans have been around for at least 20, 30,000 years. Homo sapiens, our species, we have documented evidence through carbon-14 dating, through pictures on walls, through cave paintings in France. 30,000 years ago, the Aborigines have a history of at least 25,000 years. Uh, so we, when we as Muslims uh, are, are presented with these facts, we don't understand that when we say evolution is, is, is false, it's assumed that our stance is the same as that of Christians. You see, our Sharia, our Quran did not come with any timeline. We don't have to restrict ourselves to 6,000 years. We can say that human beings have been around for 20, 30, 40,000 years. It doesn't contradict anything uh, in our tradition. We don't have any problems affirming other life uh, entities and forms. There's nothing un-Islamic about believing in dinosaurs. In fact, when science tells us there were dinosaurs, well then we believe there were dinosaurs. Our Sharia, Allah clearly says, Allah has created that which you do not know. Our Sharia, because many verses in the Quran that, uh, uh, that there are creations I'm getting a little bit uh, fishy here, but there are, I would even argue that the Quran argues for life forms outside of our life forms, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Allah has scattered uh, creatures across the creations. This is what Allah has said. And I would even argue the Quran actually has uh, references that there are other life speeches and forms beyond even our own. So what we're denying is simply that uh, the, the Adamic story is a, is, a, is a metaphor. We don't believe that. We believe that God created Adam and Eve, and from the two of them, our species uh, basically came. It could be that minor variations occur within a species. So they've documented, let's say, on the Galapagos Islands, a certain lizard uh, becomes different after five, ten generations. We have no problems affirming, affirming that. They've documented fruit flies in 20, 30 generations of fruit flies. They might develop certain chromosomes or, or, or modify their DNA. For us, this is only more power to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah has created inside of this creature the mechanism to adapt. However, Modern science cannot, it has not and it cannot prove that all life forms evolve from the very same species. And I watched an interview with Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins is a self-professed prophet of atheism. He says he's the prophet of no God. That's what he says. And he, and he preaches, he's the most militant atheist, uh, I would say, alive today. Uh, and Richard Dawkins was interviewed um, by, by BBC. And basically the interviewer said, even in your version of evolution, there are big gaps that are unanswered. Therefore, you have to have a leap of faith. Just like people of religion have big gaps and they have leaps of faith. What's so different? I mean, you don't know everything. They don't know everything. You've explained it in one mechanism, they've explained it in another. When he was presented with that, he was like, well, I suppose you could look at it that way, but my faith in science is more than my faith in a God. Right? In the end of the day, even Richard Dawkins has to acknowledge that he cannot connect the dots. You know that there was a certain species of Neanderthals 100,000 years ago. We don't have a problem affirming that. You know that dinosaurs existed. We don't have a problem affirming that. You know that XYZ, you have all of these dots. The question is, how do you connect the dots, right? Richard Dawkins has his version of events, and that version is basically an, a godless version. We have our version of events. In the end of the day, to be very simplistic, it does boil down to a little bit of faith. Richard Dawkins has more faith in, I would say nothing. We have faith in what we call God and the traditions.